This is a video addressing education and its various aspects for the global goals made by Minan, Wunan, Lee, Myung, and A. Kamala and I. School dropouts. There are about 114,000 students who dropped out of school in 2007, and that number is likely to have risen in the past eight years. 2.57% children aged 5 to 17 in Vietnam never attended any formal school. Boys start to drop out of school more in secondary school. In some places, girls are forced to stay home instead of studying. It could be that they are poor, so they cannot afford an education, and Vietnamese public schools are not entirely free, or child labor, or a lack of parental care, or the vast distance to travel to even get to school, or early marriages. School violence, although this is pretty much normal in some Vietnamese classrooms where physical punishment is considered as just, it must be understood that violence is absolutely unacceptable. This can be from bullies or even from teachers. Perhaps some of us are unfortunately familiar with the fact that you can get spanked, slapped, or hit with any convenient object just because you got a low grade from the last test. Some parents even agree with this treatment, which can only make it worse. Poor learning environment. Some people don't even have the proper facilities to learn. They don't have enough textbooks, pens, pencils, rulers, and those factors can be a real hindrance to learning. Imagine just remembering all that are taught at school without noting it down somewhere. Can any of us even do that? They might not have enough rooms in the school, no libraries, not even toilets. That might sound funny now, but school without toilets? This is getting serious. Poor teaching quality. This might be a taboo or not widely accepted as appropriate, but a lot of us are told that colleges and universities for teaching in Vietnam don't require high marks or high standards. Therefore, a lot of people choose to go there as a last resort when they can't get into their first choice profession. That might lead to a lack of passion or interest in teaching. If the teachers don't like it, how can the students like it? Lack of teachers in rural areas. You may have seen documentaries about how two or three teachers have to go all the way through two rivers, the world all muddy and the conditions just downright terrifying to get to school every day. That's one reason why teachers don't think it's appealing to teach in rural areas. Also because of the low pay and low living standards. But it's those areas that need them the most. The fewer teachers we have, the lower the living standards will be. That leads to less teachers, the lower living standards, a true vicious cycle. What if there was no proper education? What if no one told one another what to do? What if you were told to just learn to read on your own? There is formal education, but a more important aspect is informal education, where you learn by imitation, by socializing, by other people around you. You learn how to behave in society, you learn how to treat different people differently, and so many more that school doesn't teach you. And that's much more important, we think. It's really easy to think of extremely disastrous scenarios like the destruction of humankind, which can really happen if there's absolutely no education at all. But let's go down. How would you do in life if nobody told you how to do anything? Would you have achieved all that you have so far? Would you be able to get a job later in the future? Would that job pay you well? Would people socialize with you? Multiply those problems by the number of people alive on Earth right now, and that's a pretty big deal if I do say so myself. Things like racism, sexism, discrimination against the LGBT community, and so many more need education to help people realize that there's definitely something wrong with the system and how we can fix that system. Learning how to treat people who are different from you respectfully, learning how to do math, learning how to cure diseases, learning how to manage a huge system, learning how to peel an apple even. All of those different skills are necessary for us as a whole to function cooperatively together, which will hopefully secure our survival and happiness. Given the problems of school dropouts and poor facilities, we are now facing a question for ourselves. What can we really do to help? And one of our first solutions, as you may have also known already, is that the science constructors are raising funds by collecting money from the escape room and we will be using this money for charity. 
the money collected may cover some costs for underprivileged children to buy textbooks and learning tools. From now to the end of the year, we'll have chances to have musty days, and we'll try to raise more and more money to help improve facilities at the local school. Violence? Guess what? It all comes down to raising awareness, really. So our group's ideas are: if we can all commit in doing this, we can make a formal video in which groups of students say. We are BVS students, and we believe in non-violent and safe learning environment. The video can then be uploaded on YouTube so that the message can be spread out. Improving teaching quality. Uh, our answer is workshops, workshops, and more workshops. We once heard about a workshop in the American Center that allowed Vietnamese teachers to meet one of the world's greatest educators from the U.S. They shared ideas with each other, and the educators made very inspiring speeches about teaching. If we can organize more and more events like this, plus more and more training for teachers, the teaching quality will improve for sure. How to tackle this is a big challenge. We definitely need more funding, more people who can do it, more resources to ensure they can do it, and so many more things. It's not a question of what our group can do. It's a question of how we can all come together and solve it. It takes the whole country's dedication.